Hey guys, welcome to the Improvement Season podcast. However, I think it was the reason my intro went a bit haywire just a second ago was because I was thinking, is Pascal revealing anything this week? Or is he keeping, is his life still in secret? The only thing that I'm revealing is my heart to you guys. His heart. Now I can't, only because I was going to intro it slightly differently if he was going to give you some secrets away, uh, which is me telling you too much probably already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> or everyone's just like, what is this? I have no idea what you're co- talking about. <laughs> yeah, no, let, let's wait. Let's wait a little bit longer um, before I'm revealing the thing that I am revealing. <laughs> so we're here on yeah. for another improvement season then. And you just cracked open a monster. Mm-hmm. Question, how many monsters a day or how much caffeine total do you roughly know you're having or how many like distinct caffeine <coughs> sources are you having? Um, normally one monster, only very, very rarely. And that is only when we are recording our podcast. I don't know what it is, but I very much like them to have something like that. Um, don't know what it is, Steve. It's It's you. It's you. <laughs> Who's then? You need something to get through yeah. it. <laughs> no, yeah, a monster. Um, no, but other than that, it's still like three to four espressos um, throughout the day, which in and for itself, if you really think about it, it's not crazy, uh, the amount of caffeine. But I have no idea about the milligrams and milliliters of caffeine that you are then consuming. Um, yeah, I'm drinking like coffee because I freaking love it, yeah. and I'm not tracking the, <laughs> the caffeine. So like 60 to 80 milligrams or something in an yeah, espresso? Yeah, something like that. Okay. It's not yeah, crazy so. because a normal black coffee is like 200 or something like that, well, or even that more, be a two to 300. Oh. That'd be a very strong, large yeah. black coffee, yeah. They're normally like a just standard one, I think, are normally just over 100 mm. milligrams. Okay. So, yeah, an espresso, that would make sense if it was like that sort of amount. So your intake's probably similar to mine at the moment, but I just have passed the coffee point and I'm just like, monster yeah the entire time monster (laughs) i've been having a monster every day for i don't know how long a very long time all right Uh, and actually if people are concerned about health jess did a whole presentation on energy drinks Mm. that you can get on the members site so yeah she kind of covered that one off yeah Um, very biased because she's always drinking energy drinks herself and it's being sponsored by an energy drink (laughs) company she wish (laughs) Uh, so yeah this week i've actually had two monsters the past two days so there's 180 milligrams i believe per monster something like that Hmm. so under 400 milligrams per day but still that's a high amount that's a a decent hit of caffeine for me i don't normally have i would normally have been having one monster a day and that's it maybe on occasion have a monster and then a coffee as well so like under 300 milligrams per day and I know uh, from Andrew Chappelle's work in the research, he did like a study on natural bodybuilders, how much caffeine were they consuming? There was like several people having over a thousand milligrams a day. And that's because people do like, they do the coffee, they do the sugar-free yeah. drinks and they do fat burners. And yeah, it just, yeah. people don't even, like, like you, you're you aware, like you're not just like, fuck it, I'm going to have all the coffee I want and drink exactly. it like water. Yeah. But some people aren't, and I was ignorant to what caffeine, how much caffeine was in things and how it could impact <clears throat> sleep. This is basically what we've talked about over the entirety, that, or over the last couple of weeks, um, that the way that we have dieted up to this point has been way more mature than it has been in the past. Because whenever we were bringing up these kind of things, also when it comes to training volume, training mistakes and stuff like that, it has come from our experience and putting in the work and, and failing and doing the mistakes ourselves. And there it is the same. Um like I've I've abused caffeine in the past. I've abused uh, sh- dietary drinks. I've abused the volume of food as well, in order to make me feel better. But in return, it didn't really make me feel better. Yeah, I completely I... agree. I think my sleep quality has been a little bit worse the mm. last couple of days. Like I've been getting up. Like I've been, actually, this is the perfect example. My I haven't been getting sleepy as early. So I normally was getting sleepy like 9.30, maybe even before that. Whereas now it's like 10, a little bit past 10. And then I'm waking up earlier as well. Mm. So I'm waking up at like 6, 6.30. And I'm like, <clears throat> uh, I think that's just 
the caffeine probably just having that impact so i'm going to try I, today I, and skip the second monster and have a half calf coffee which i purchased maybe it's a combination of both though uh, consuming a little bit more caffeine and then also of course and the negative ad uh, adaptations and effects of dieting because I noticed it myself, especially over the past three weeks now, ever since I decided to push, um, that I started incorporating now a melatonin again since like last week, I think we've spoke, right? And yeah. then there were a couple of days where I was just like getting to bed, wasn't able to fall asleep, getting up like later than I wanted to, to uh, throw in a melatonin a pill and then going to bed. <clears throat> what I do with the melatonin pills is though, um, I'm lucky that they are like the not capsules or so, yeah, but really just that. pills. And I can just like cut them into smaller pieces because I think that they are overdosed in, in yeah. such a significant manner. Uh, and that helped. And I'm still getting up way earlier in the morning as well. So I'm having a harder time falling asleep, even though that I feel tired. And I'm getting up a little bit earlier. Um, and I'm not drinking way more um Ca caffeinated drinks it's maybe one espresso more per day because normally i definitely only drink like three especially when i'm well fat because otherwise my hunger levels or satiety levels are just like too much impacted by that yeah yeah it's it's a good point it, it could be a combination of things it's always hard to decipher exactly what it is because you're yeah. right i took my calories down 250 and now that's been four days having done that so that's quite a significant drop. And my, where are I can you tell you uh, where are my numbers at. Yeah, in regards to calories now that you are pushing? <clears throat> Just under 2,000. Okay. But you have to consider where I'd come from. So my average is now at 2,000. My average before was at like 2,700, 2,800. Not that long ago, like a month ago, that's where it was because yeah. of taking into consideration the refeed. So it's a big drop for me. Yeah. Uh, it really is uh, and like hitting 19,000 steps with a 10 kilo weighted vest on standing for the majority of my day it's yeah my physique is not looking great at the moment I can tell you that since like it's dramatic looking from the peak week yeah. to now this week I'm looking like I just did a posing up there and really didn't want to so <laughs> man I look washed out and mm. less defined flat and the only good thing that's looking there is the tan. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's crazy. Um, and, I, and I think that you bring up some very good points. And we will definitely touch on what has happened in the last uh, or during the last weekend. Because I think that the people want to know that as well. If they haven't already noticed it over on the social medias. And they are waiting, waiting for the update here on the improvement season. But I think it's very valuable that you are as transparent as you are with how low that you have to go now the um the difference between you now in comparison to just like a couple of weeks ago and also especially the comparison to the off season so that people get a good idea of how low sometimes you have to go right for someone for you going below 2000 calories <clears throat> ramping it up to 19000 steps per day wearing the weighted uh, weighted vest than standing most of the day this is this is exhaustive yeah yeah it, it is it, it's just a case of we chose to do this it's the similar yeah. story to you with your low calorie intake and you have to kind of pick yeah. your poison like i someone might say like oh why don't you just go down to i could go down to 1500 slash my steps by like 5000 i could do that uh, it's just you have to pick your poison. Where do you want to go for? Um, yeah. And yeah, it's, it sucks, but it's part of doing business. This is the cost of doing business. And I know, and actually, uh, I'll, I'll speak through this part of the reality as well. My scale weight just being a complete mind fuck. Today, because uh, we spoke yesterday, Pascal, and I said my scale weight had been going up and up. You know it was even higher today, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, due to the bloating and the aubergine so, yeah. incidents. <laughs> I woke up bloated and I was just like, I sat on the toilet. You know, when you're like sat on the toilet, like how long am I going to wait here to pass a number one? I uh, know a, a number two uh, before I jump on the scale. I'm like, I've already been on the toilet like 10 minutes. I need to get up and just weigh myself. This number two ain't happening now. So I, I was almost like, like I said to you, I'm just like, fuck it. Like the scale is just not a good indicator for me right now. Yeah. It hasn't been for 
over a month really <coughs> so but, but checking the physique isn't either at because times, you yeah. said it yourself as well at the moment that because you have to push so aggressively at the moment um you just look flat you look shitty you're probably holding on to a lot of water as well when the scale weight is then also jumping up and right now i think the that you are at a point where you just have to trust the process and know that you are in a more aggressive deficit and it's happening yeah it's kind of mind games at this point mm. like where you just can't identify and this is where like enhanced competitors when they're going to stage man they must have such a like yeah. even in gaining phases like man as naturals we're like oh we're when like you're just like jumping up <laughs> fluctuating like 10 20 pounds yeah. only by water and that oh, in dear. a matter of a couple of days crazy madness uh i have no idea how they deal with that and like have the confidence to do things they must have to trial things all the time <clears> and <throat> learn and like we do so i know however shitty i feel this week however poor my physique looks this week the uh, peak week next week, uh, when I get into that, will recover it m more than I can even imagine because I know that just happened last week into the UK and FBA where I was like shocked after a couple of days of how I felt when I posed, how full I could, I, I physically felt um, in terms of like muscu muscle fullness, my energy levels, my just irritability all dropped off. Whereas, yeah, it's it, also surprising equally how quick it all picks back up yeah uh it was just like on monday i was like fuck i feel like i'm back in that hole again my yeah. irritability is up the dog can do one <laughs> i don't want to talk to anyone <laughs> so yeah that's that's where i am shall i go on to i have a question i want to ask you but shall i say what happened on the weekend go ahead ask the question and then we are moving over to what has happened on okay. the weekend and yeah the question i had because i think we spoke about it a little bit last week where i think you said your calorie intake at the moment is th 13 to 1500 yeah is that correct i'd yeah. love i think the audience would be interested and i'm interested to hear what does that look like <coughs> when you're eating through the day what how does your frequency look are you intermittent fasting are you having just potato or <laughs> like yeah, yeah how does it look <clears throat> it's actually pretty straightforward and i can give that from the top of my head um, so I'm waking up in the morning at around 4.50ish. Um, it's always the same time, even if I have a rest day trying to sleep in, but most of the time I'm just getting up before the alarm. The reason why I'm doing that is to keep the routine as much the same as possible so that nothing really gets in my way. Um, because I really do believe that if you're just sticking with your habits, it makes things so much easier, even though that you have, or even though that you may perceive it as being a little bit more restrictive. Um, but this is something that I've never had any kind of issues with saying no to other people, just doing my thing. So getting up 4.50 in the morning, going downstairs, making myself a whey shake, um, and also an espresso. Then um, stepping on the treadmill, going on a walk, while then listening to my check. So I've built myself kind of a rack where then my um, trap mill is under the rack and I have my notebook up there so I can do my check. I listen to my check and take some notes while being active, right? Then afterwards, um, I'm heading to the gym, doing my training session, coming back, having breakfast with my, with my uh, family. And the breakfast looks like this, that I'm having one pack of quark, which is 350 calories, 60 grams of, car uh, 60 grams of protein it is, alongside with some um, frozen fruit. Um, that brings me all the way to the day of like around 11 to 12-ish. And then I'm having lunch, which is then most of the time where I'm cooking something for myself. And cooking is more like a bowl of vegetables, with uh, some lean protein sauce and right now it can uh, vary between chicken breast like 200 grams 250 grams of chicken breast i mean and or something like shrimps um and then the vegetables are things such as uh, tomatoes um what uh, courgettes you said right courgettes zucchini um, we have zucchini, a lot of American exactly listeners. Um, and that's what I'm then he having uh, for, for lunch. And then 
sometimes in between lunch and then dinner time i'm having like a snack and the snack looks like this that it may be like a carrot and maybe some tomatoes or maybe something like a cucumber so not not an entire cucumber but some cucumber sticks um and then it's dinner time already and dinner time basically same old story um also there's something like either chicken breast or shrimps alongside with often a cucumber salad and that's basically it cool simple yeah a very very simple um not overthinking things not being crazy about it not worrying about things too much all right and pretty straightforward it is actually almost like a protein modify like it's yeah, almost yeah. like rapid fat loss in a sense yeah, yeah uh, because absolutely of where the calories are lying and you just can't afford the carbohydrates yeah. to be higher fats super low oh yeah this is, uh, i was gonna say there's set. like no fat yeah in that. it's it's around 20 grams do you supplement I'd... with omegas yeah um and people would be worried about like yeah what about your hormones man the thing is if you decide to push like that and go very very low in body fat levels you shouldn't really be concerned about hormone levels in the first place. I mean, and it shouldn't be something that you do over a sustained, sustained. period of time. No. This is only for a temporary amount of time, right? And right now, I don't have the um, symptoms of like low fat intake. And I know what it feels like, like very low fat intake. Of course, the, the libido may be impacted a little bit. But most of the time, this is also due to lower body fat percentages. What I've noticed whenever I went very, very low in fat intake is that my skin gets very, very dry. Um, how, should I, how should I describe it? It's not just a normal sense of dryness, but it's more like when you, when you brush over your skin, then it just flies up in the air, you know? Like, like Polans, or, or is it called Polans? Polans? Like, mm, I don't know. Like fungi or so when you touch it and then it just like spreads through the entire room right. um <clears throat> and this is something that i haven't noticed as of yet um so this is a good sign uh and then also yeah in regards to carbohydrates just coming from fruits and vegetables at the moment yeah the body also when you're on low calories it just down regulates all of those sort of processes so you get dry skin even when you've been on like low calories for an extended yeah. period of time your, your hair will grow a little bit less quick. Your nails will grow less quickly. Which brings All me to a this. good point, uh, Steve. Maybe because I've, I've experienced it so often that people are very concerned about their fats being super low. And then they are reporting about like, oh, I do think that my fat intake is, is very low. I would be curious to know whether this is just like um, being overly concerned about it. And whether there's a justification for them thinking or feeling that um, or whether it's more like in their head because they think like, oh no, I have to, or the, the threshold for me is at around 40 or 50 grams. And if I'm below that, I will immediately feel the impacts of it. I don't know. What do you think? It's definitely a question I've looked into in terms of like, what's the lowest you can go with fat that's meant to be like within health because people look at it and they're right. Fat's an essential um, yeah. macronutrient uh, i always remember though broderick saying like broderick chavez would be like you can get the fat that you need like the essential fats from licking a post-it note <laughs> he was mm. just like you need fuck all but he also works with mostly enhanced people so i yeah. do think that has to be said um not that necessarily he was <clears throat> referencing it as a uh, as an issue for them but i think maybe that does taint his view slightly uh, and when i have looked into it and kind of looked at what other people are saying the low recommendation I see given is 0.25 per pound. That's like the lowest recommendation. Going lower than that is a kind of recommended not to sustain that for an extended period of time. But, but that's the thing, right? Over a sustained just, period of time. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was only going to say that recommendation, there's no actual like hard solid evidence or research to suggest that going below that for an extended period of time is inherently bad. You'd have to get blood work done. You'd have to be at maintenance probably to really know if it was necessarily bad uh, mm -hmm. and control a load of variables. But that's where most experts settle on being comfortable uh, for fat intake for an extended period of time, like I said. Yeah. 
And I can see, I, I mean, the thing is, it's uh, unquestionable whether fats are, its, well, fatty acids from a dietary source are essential because they are for certain physiological processes. Um, but I just wonder whether people, I don't know, overinterpret their situation and wrongly assume or make come to conclusions due to lower fat intake that this is the way that they feel or whether it's just because they are on a lower caloric intake and they make the wrong conclusions due to those things. Hi guys, Steve here. Just wanted to take a moment of your time to remind you of the Revive Stronger member site. Inside you'll find a thriving forum, a growing exercise library, presentations, research reviews and courses. If you want to get involved, sign up via the description. There's inevitably some, it's kind of like, I think in some ways, this is where meal plans for contest prep could come real handy mm. because you just take food away and people don't know the macros. They don't know the calories. So someone might look at what you're eating and seeing it on paper and seeing it in real life, they're like decent amount of food. But when you tell them <clears throat> that's under like 40 grams of fat, that's less than 1500 calories. They're like, oh no, that means it's like, I'm going to be starving ravenous. And it's like, but look at the food. You just said it was plenty. Yeah. Uh, I do think there's a mental component to it, even for myself. Yeah. Uh, and like, I've even seen it with clients who are really struggling. And then I give them a refeed and just the thought of a refeed, they're like, I didn't need to take it because just knowing oh, yeah. I could take it yeah, yeah. was enough. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. There's also something then when people are, I don't know, uh, partaking in social occasions or events and they think like, oh no, I don't want to deviate from the plan. And I'm just like, here, this is an option. You now know you can go above the caloric range or target that we set for uh, ourselves. And that kind of re gives them already more than a relief that they know that they are not fucking things up or so. Yeah, for sure. One last question. In, are you doing anything to keep like chewing gum? You're having chewing gum. Uh, diet drinks, seven up? Mm, yeah, no seven, seven up, up at times, but um, it's very... So everything is way more mature. I would cool. I would describe it's not like a liter um, a day. Yeah, so it's more it's more when I fancy it. It's more like at the end of the day when I fancy just something I don't know sparkling in my mouth. I know I know it always sounds wrong, but um, that's something that I like. But this is very very minimal still. Yeah, and then also when it comes to chewing gum, I maybe have like two times per day chewing gum. So when I'm training, this is a must, but this also happens in, a, in an off-season. Then when I'm picking up the kids from the kindergarten, these are the only times when I really have chewing gum. So everything, everything is well more balanced, yeah. Um, well more mature. I'm not abusing things. I'm not overdoing things. And I think that that really helped me being where I'm at right now, that I'm not trying desperately to to go against the ways that I feel or the sensations that we are both experiencing when being on low calories. I made that decision. Um, I know that I'm not going to die. Um, I just accept the situation. I accept my decisions and then I just do what I have to do. Um, and I'm so, so happy that I'm in a position like this now because we both know how much I've or that I had times where I struggled that much. This is so much more the person that I always have been. Like, if there's something that I need to do, I just do it without complaining. Yeah. And then there was the time, and I even said it like two, three years ago, that I don't recognize myself um, with those behaviors and the way that I acted and all that kind of stuff. I'm so happy to be kind of back again and be fully in control. And I hope, I really do hope that people who are right now struggling with things such as binge eating or uh, giving themselves a hard time or so, that this can give them hope that they can get it under control and up to a very, very high extent of control, actually. It's definitely something worth, I don't know, I almost want you to do like a, a vlog on it or like a, an Instagram post or something, just sharing how like that transition, I think that'd be really, really cool. Even like mm. a blog article or a presentation or something, that'd be really cool. Yeah. One just final question. Yeah. Sorry. I just don't know how much people are then getting out of something like that. Because yeah, often, it's tricky. Right? 
Um, this is more something like, I don't, I don't know. Um, I have the feeling that people, it takes re very much a long time um, to get here. Getting things under control again. Yeah. And I don't know whether people are very much, or the vast majority of people are willing to put in the work and effort. Um, I don't know. For me, it was just something that I had to do for myself. Yeah, well, wasn't really a question or so. And I think that Cliff Wilson did a fantastic post just lately about the retention rate of bodybuilders, um, yeah. how long people are actually sticking with bodybuilding. And it's not a lot of people staying there for long. Right? And this is maybe the same thing that then um, when they are confronted with dealing or getting things under control, and they realize how much work and time and effort it requires, that then they just say, like, it isn't worth it to me. Fuck it. That's what has to be a lifestyle. Has to be. Yeah. Um, so the final question was... <laughs> okay. <laughs> quark. Yeah. Unsweetened. Unsweetened, yeah. You don't add any flav drops or... No. It's enough with the fruits. And I have the feeling that when it's unsweetened, um, it gives me a little bit a better satiation. Oh, I yeah. know it sounds weird, but it's probably due to the palatability scale. Yeah. If you make it more palatable, then the body has a harder time, I would assume, just controlling itself. Um, yeah. I think that I'm still fine. I, I think that I'm still in a position where I could flavor it without any kind of issues, to be honest. Um, because also there... I'm falling back to what I just said. I am in a position where I'm so much more mature, so much more in control. I even think that I could have um, some kind of, I don't know, chocolate pot pudding or so without gorging my face off or so, anything I like. And just knowing this is, is very, very freeing and very empowering. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where it's like for me, I'm having like my protein oats and I have some dark chocolate on it in the morning. Like that's very palatable to me at the moment. If it was leading me to not adhere, it would be an easy thing to be like, right, Steve, stop having that dark chocolate, switch it for something less palatable. But yeah. it's something that I enjoy every morning. I look forward to it. And like this yeah. nine grams of dark chocolate that I put on my oats. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm keeping that in because it's not driving me up the wall. It's not leading to me not adhering. But if I, if it was, then like you, like I could even go as far as buying like unflavored protein powder to put into these things yeah. or what have you. You can do this, uh, not putting ketchup on my meals. Like I could do that. It would make it less tasty I, and I'd eat it slower, probably have yeah less cravings, more satiety. Yeah. I think on another note or on a similar note though, I think that I can confidently say that I'm in a position where I am completely risk-free of never binging again. That's um, huge. Yeah. Congrats. Absolutely. And the thing is, it didn't happen here over the last three years. Right? So it's not that. It is something that is, I don't know, I, I've seen it so often already that people are binging, then they have a streak. And then they are getting overly confident and complacent at the same time. And then it's happening again because they weren't careful. They like let their guard down. And it's not me at the moment, right? It has been th over three years and a lot has changed. And I can wholeheartedly say like, okay, this is a person who is who's in control as he always has been with more knowledge and also having been through something like that. So I can I can just tell that I don't think that I'm in a position where I would ever binge again, to be honest. And that also this is so empowering and so freeing and makes me so confident um, with handling situations, even being able to, to now have, I don't know, something that I already said. I could have something sweet without being like, shit, I need to control myself. It's get. not like it's a trigger food anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't even think that this is any risk anymore at all. And also this should hopefully be a little bit motivating for people listening to that who have been struggling in the past maybe with binging or who are right now binging. That I, I think that if you put in the work and effort and all the kind of stuff that you can overcome it and completely be free of it for the rest of your life. Something I found myself in my last off season on a related note 
I got more comfortable consuming foods that were uh, in high calorie per bite, basically, mm. where maybe I'd have avoided them always because mm. I'm like, it's not worth the calories because I was scared I was going to get hungry. But it, I got to a point where I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to be hungry. I'm on plenty of food. I'm well fed. Eat the damn dense food that you yeah. actually do want to try and you've just been avoiding it because you're scared of being hungry. That's super freeing once you get to that position because a lot of the time you make these macro friendly choices. You're like you want a Ben and Jerry's, you're yeah. going to have the the Halo top or something. It's like, but you can just have half a portion. That's okay. Made absolutely. You bring up such a good point because this is this is also applying to me. I never would have been able in the past to just say no to like an entire pint of Ben and Jerry's or so. Now. I could even have just like two scoops and that should be enough if I yeah. want to, right? I could even have the cake, which I avoided for years, years. And also same story for um, certain meals, just proper meals. I always needed to have a, a decent size meal in order to feel satisfied and satiated. And now they are more so reasonable in size. I can have something like a salmon. I, I freaking love salmon and I avoided it for years like on a regular basis because it's relatively high in calories for for the density that it's bringing like the volume the size it's bringing um and now I can easily have that and it's also there uh, I mean this this is quality right this is quality um and I think that many people think it's a black or white thing when you're doing something like bodybuilding you can't enjoy those things um both you and i steve i know this that we had clients in the past already leaving us because they think like or said bodybuilding is taking over my life i can't do this anymore right first and foremost the decision is yours and they don't have to be mutually exclusive you're just not used to combining those things and having a well-balanced approach because if you make this your lifestyle, it will require you to put in the time to make it your lifestyle. Right? Uh, everything will be new to you. You've probably, you didn't grow up like this. Right? So you have to actually then see and put in the work and find out how you can balance these things together. Yeah. And it's like you said, and it's like you described in terms of it, it is work, it is effort to find that balance because people don't like to have to think they want to be either off or on. And it comes back to that flexibility and never being fully on or fully off and being able to jump in between the two. It's not like you go on holiday and you have to binge your face off or you macro track every single day. There's a middle ground that you can go and enjoy yourself, be mindful, but yeah. it takes maturity. It takes time. And just even like a lot of people aren't good at that who aren't in this industry, let alone people in it. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's a good discussion and it's definitely one we'll have more in the off season. And I'm really happy that you're in the position you're in because the transition for you from where you are into off season and gaining some body fat back, I think will be a challenging one because it's always challenging, but yeah. you're in a much better place to succeed at that now. Yeah, absolutely. And I honestly, I'm looking so much forward to the transition, not because I want to eat more. Um, I even thought about it. what do I want to do like after after the push here in November. Um, and I'm not entirely set as of yet. But the thing is, what I've realized is even now, the way that I feel right now is just because the calories are so low. From a body fat percentage, I, f I, I still feel fine. This is probably also because I still carry more body fat than I thought I, I do but I feel fine and I think that maybe I'm someone who doesn't really need to gain up to that certain extent as I did over the past couple of years and I can actually stay at a lower lower body weight and still do productive work at the gym um, and I'm looking forward to that um, to not be too aggressively pushing up the body weight Staying a little bit more maybe on the lean lean side of things. Um, yeah, and also just like having that approach mindset around food now leading into the off-season because nothing really, really changed about the way that I'm eating at the moment. I will still cook for myself. I will still keep things, in quotation marks, clean. Not because I have to or because I don't want to enjoy other meals, but it's more like I, I like it. 
um, that makes me feel good. It tastes well. I, this is, I don't know. Um, it's very, very hard to put in words, but I get more pleasure and sensation now from eating properly and cooking stuff for myself than highly p- palatable and processed foods, to be honest. But when Christmas do comes around, we need to actually uh, get that in the diary, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> to revive Christmas uh, meal out. That would be yeah. great. And we'll all be in a much better position to fully enjoy that and on plenty of food and well-fed. Yeah. So that would be cool. Yeah. One last thing, Steve, because you brought up that you are now looking like shit and super flat and so. And because I've been on such a low poverty amount of macros at the moment, <clears throat> I think that uh, once I'm loading up, um, I'm very, very curious to see what it will look like. Because, of course, with that carbohydrate intake that I'm running right now, I'm very flat and I can tell whenever whenever I have something on that heats me up a little bit, the veins are just popping out everywhere. And that is not even that the musculature is full and then pressing against the skin. Um, at once, I'm like this without any kind of clothing for like two, three minutes and the body uh, temperature is cooling down again. All of the veins immediately disappear again and you just look flat and stringy and not great overall right so i'm very much looking forward to what the body will look like with a couple of days higher carbohydrates in me especially because it has been relatively a short period of time where i've then lost a decent amount of uh, of muscle mass i want to say of of uh, body weight and because of that Because it has also been so long ago, though, that I had a decent amount of carbohydrates, I think that the difference, even to me, will be be significant when I'm seeing myself. And that is something that I'm looking forward to, to be honest. Very, very curious. Hey, Pascal here. I just quickly wanted to remind you of our online coaching service. At Revive Stronger, we put a huge emphasis on the personal aspect of our coaching. And if you want to take your physique and knowledge to the next level, hit the link in the description below. Yeah, I mean, you must be fully depleted because uh, there must a lot of what you're consuming is just like fiber. Yeah. So you're not really getting anything <laughs> like proper yeah. from that that you can even store. Yeah. And your step count's reasonable as well, isn't it? It's like yeah. over 15,000. So Yeah, there have yeah, been you- days where, where it felt like our... I, I trained laggers on that day and not because I have done too many steps. It was happening in the morning time, right? Where I was so depleted that walking felt like a workout. Um, yeah, and uh, I mean, also there, it is what it is, right? Um, trying to keep up the routine, keep up the habits. Um, there were times, of course, where you think like, oh, shit, I would rather want to now just like lay down. But this is where I'm just, where the experience also pays off, where I just know, all right, this is now the diet break talking. Keep it up. You're now going out on a walk. Yeah. This is sometimes I was finding myself sit down. Oh, sometimes I find myself sit down on the toilet and I'm like sat there <laughs> at about, I've been sat here too long. Steve, get the fuck off the toilet. And get, get stood back up. You need to, like the body is just, uh, I, I did the meme with the squid games and it was in the first, like most people, a lot of people probably watched it, but people have probably seen the scene where it's like the, what's it called? Red light, blue light or green light, sorry, red light, green light. And he's like falling over and then the guy's holding him. It's like, so you can't, so he's not going to fall over and get shot by the weird robot thing. It's like your body is holding you back, (laughs) trying to lose fat. Everything is holding you back. You get colder. Uh Like it just, it just gets so efficient. It's like you said, everything takes more energy to do. Feels like it takes more energy, but actually, in fact, everything takes less energy. Yeah, and you're more so efficient at it. Yeah. Just like even walking, we're more efficient at it. Your yeah. gait is different. You, oh, it's uh, you pick your feet up less. It's so yeah. annoying. The good thing <laughs> is though that Katie has even given me some compliments and said like that I'm doing a fantastic job. Oh, that's um, really nice. Fantastic, I, and I probably assume that she refers to that. It's barely noticeable uh, for the environment. I would assume that. I, I just do things um, kind of for myself, of course. I don't feel the need to constantly talking about it because this is also something that many fall fall into trap to as well, um, to just talk about prep, 
because this takes over the life and that can yeah. be quite draining don't let this happen um because sometimes it's just if that takes over your life i've seen it so often on unfortunately also there that people are just like i don't know f- afterwards completely drop it because they just shot all of their powder in one prep already i don't you don't want to be that guy um and that was very 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 m- kind of motivating and very cool to hear from her the feedback of like i think that you're doing great at the moment especially considering that you're that low in calories you're not super moody you're not super snappy of course there are times right you're not super lethargic it's not like that i'm just sitting around trying to avoid all of the tasks in the household katie and i are even doing a a date day um here on the upcoming weekend so it's not that i'm just like oh katie can we wait with that and stuff like that so um that's great to hear that i don't neglect the family and the relationship and i become a vegan crossfitter who's only talking about veganism and crossfit (laughs) charlotte's just said she thinks this time around i'm more irritable (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, I think I'm just getting oldy, you know. <laughs> I don't think I'm more into it. Maybe yeah. I am. I think actually it's funny. Like, as weird as this sounds, having a dog, it makes me feel like I'm more irritable because it's just constantly there, wanting mm. attention, looking at me, wanting food. And I'm just like, fuck you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a weird uh, thing. Maybe She's it's lovely. the catalyst I'm, for you. Uh, maybe Ada yeah. just... Gets all of your rage and anger. She knows how to wind me up, even though she doesn't have a clue yeah. what she's doing. Oh, poor Ada. Oh, dear. Oh. Anyway, uh, Steve, talk a little bit about the last weekend. What 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 went on? Cool. So, yeah, those who have been following along, it's the was the UK, the FBA International Finals. And I competed in the middle height or medium height category. There was 11 people of us in the category. And there was quite a lot of people from Germany, from Austria. There was someone from Africa, actually, who came all the way from Africa to compete. Um, So it was, yeah, crazy. And it was a stacked class. I was thinking if I competed in this class 2017, I would not have placed. Mm. And those who are listening knew I wanted a top three placing. And I would be disappointed if I didn't get a top five. And I came fourth. And I have to be honest, I was gutted and I'm still gutted with fourth place. I wanted more. I wanted top three. I was lying to myself. Top five wasn't good enough for me. <laughs> um, and I feel a bit bad for being dissatisfied, but it's just because I'm. it's a competitive sport and I really, really wanted a top three. It just would have really cemented some things for me. And falling back to fourth was a bit of a kick in the balls, particularly because Charlie, who's an awesome dude, uh, who I beat <laughs> and my qualifier beat me at finals. So he got that third spot and I came fourth. It's a subjective sport. You never know who's going to turn up on the day. Things can go up and down. And we were incredibly tight at the qualifier. So it doesn't surprise me that it flip-flopped the other way this time, really, because we will have been, again, incredibly tight. Mm. And looking at the photos actually gave me a bit of a boost of confidence because at the time I made all my posts, I hadn't really seen much. And it made me feel like like for, I was really fourth and I was really not on the mark and on the money versus everyone else. And it made me feel that, man, <laughs> uh, do I need another four-year off-season to be able to get in the top three? Yeah. Uh, damn, okay, maybe I do. But then looking at the photos, I was much more appeased to the fact that it was and must have been an incredibly tight score across the board. And I think you could make an argument for any top of the probably top, I'd say top four. Um, No offense to the guy that came fifth. I just think the top four were a bit more conditioned and sharp than him. Um, He had great structure. And actually the top four top three have a really nice structure i'll take myself out of that because i think i have not the best structure but yeah basically looking at all of those i was like okay so maybe a different day different judging panel maybe things could have turned out differently and that gave me a bit of a confidence boost Mm. particularly because i sent you my kind of photos i didn't say anything i sent them to brett didn't say anything and you both fed back to me very similar kind of hmm steve like 
you weren't a week fourth for sure. Uh, and so it's given me a, a boost actually going into the WMBF where I'm like, fuck no, Steve, be confident. You can do this. You can be a competitive bodybuilder. You do have what it takes. Maybe I can get a top three at the WMBF. And that is now my absolute just focus that I really want a top three. If I don't get it, yeah, I mean, I'll be back. You know, guys, like I'm not going to give up. I, I started this 2014 and I came fourth in my first novice. Like actually not my, I came like fifth in my novice first show. So I'm still going to push and press on. But yeah, I'm, I'm now really gunning for that invite to Worlds, get to Las Vegas would be an absolute dream and i think it uh, there's no reason it shouldn't happen uh, it's on the no. cards so yeah like i said to you in terms of the controllables really happy with my peak i think i came in great really happy with my posing and my presentation confidence on stage there was no leg wobbles i held my own um on the day things went pretty smoothly controlled my controllables and variables and everything I could do to bring my best was there. So I have to be proud of that fact. So yeah, guys, don't get it wrong that I'm like, think I look like crap and I'm really down on myself. No, I, I'm, I'm really proud of what I brought. I'm just a bit down about the result because everyone wants to do better, don't they? Unless you came first, then you're fucking <laughs> super happy, which I was for my qualifier. Oh. So at least I did get that feeling at, at one time. No, I think that everything that you said there is also totally reasonable, right? Who was it again who did also a video about it? Uh, Darren, uh, sh maybe Shepard. I'm not sure if that's his last name, so yeah. forgive me. But Darren, uh, he's a, I've mainly seen him compete with the BMBF, but he's a coach and I've competed against some of his clients and he <coughs> kind of reflected upon my post on social media and he was like, you know what? Like you, it's a competitive sport. You can be gutted and down about it. Um, the wrong response, and I agree, the wrong response is you, you can't go and like email the judges and be like, fuck you guys, I should have placed higher. And like, this guy looked like shit, I look amazing. And you got to be a good sports person. So yeah. even if you think that in your head, and uh, even if I think that in my head in some ways, like you're subjective, it's a subjective sport. There's an objective ending in terms of where you're placed. Take it for what it is, build upon it, come back better. Make And what I believe is I need to be undeniable in terms of muscle mass and condition. And I don't have a long time to become undeniable for the WMBF, but like everyone's just heard, I've dug hard this week and there'll be a little bit more condition and I'll have given my all and what will be, will be. I have no idea who's going to turn up to the WMBF apart from Charlie is also going to be there. Fuck Charlie. Oh. So <laughs> <laughs> what's up with this guy? He's done, he won the MPA lightweight overall yeah. uh, British final. And so, yeah, he's just trying to take all the, the gold. Yeah. So a couple of thoughts on my end. Um, it's first and foremost interesting um, that independent, I, I tried to be as unbiased as I possibly could when I gave you the, the feedback and you didn't ask me for feedback. I was just like, I saw the pictures and gave you, my honest opinion that then Brett Brett Freeman also basically said the same thing and you showed me what he said and that it was basically the same thing just confirms also that we kind of know what you need to work on and what you have to bring and thing is that you've come such a long way already right and I think that you can be so so proud of yourself but at the same time you have to be realistic with what you have and that is, especially in regards to structure, you don't have that X frame in that sense. And that's why what you need to bring is like more mass. And I think that you've built already a really, really decent amount of muscle mass over the past three to four years. And why should it stop now? You have now the recipe for yourself of building some solid mass when you then can repeat the last off season again of course maybe not to the same amount um, but to a very very reasonable extent then you can bring in even way more mass the next time and then you know all right how can i bring even more if it's not structure if it's not even more mass um, because you're limited on that front then it's conditioning and also stage presence stage presence you also got some very good feedback on that one so it's then about like it's like you said you need to be unquestionable then you need 
to not shine with your proportions, but more so just with the other factors. It, uh, it reminds me of, I don't know if we spoke about it, uh, but on uh, Prime, Amazon Prime, there's a mockumentary, I think is what they're called, on McDonald's and how Croc, who basically exploded McDonald's and made it what it is today, mm. he had a philosophy and it was, he'd listen to this tape and it would just be this guy talking about how important persistence is and to keep going. And he was like, persistence can beat money, it can beat genius, it can beat talent keep going if you keep putting forward that effort you will be rewarded and to see the guy like i know it's a, a different completely different endeavor and a different thing but that's the way i see myself i'm definitely just someone who is going to keep pushing it's like you've said in the past when people are giving you shit about your physique it's like what do you expect me to do though i'm doing yeah. everything in my power to be better surely that isn't that enough for you and i love that and that inspires me and that's what i'm looking to do as well where yeah. yeah i might not be that genetic freak i might not have that not lovely kind of small waist and sweeping lats and lovely quads but i'm just gonna have undeniable other traits that can come through persistent work yeah. and effort and apply myself so it kind of yeah gave me like i, I kind of like being a bit of an underdog underdog a bit of a vegeta uh, yeah, and the thing through. is, <laughs> man, you're still at your early 30s. And if you can put in the work and effort here over the next five years, um, and especially 10, okay, maybe 10, then you're already in the op uh, in the Masters. But if you, if you, so you still have some very, very decent years in front of you where you can be super competitive, be in the normal opens, and take even there a couple of wins and stuff. All right. Yeah. So that's the plan. Um, just build upon that that competition. Yeah. So we'll just have to see if I can bring in a bit more sharpness and see if I can present something that the guys that did RBMBF like and they are willing to give me a top three placing yeah. and see who turns up on the day and who's medium in height and move forward from there. I'm just so excited for that day. One for the WMBF because I, I love the WMBF as a federation, just not that like, uh, like I've just followed them for years. Uh, they were affiliated with the UK DFBA before and having been in contact with Brett Freeman and a lot of the guys from 3DMJ, they really are like the WMBF. I've only ever seen positive things and watched worlds and seeing people there is just amazing. And I think uh, uh, Brian Whitaker is going to be at Worlds as well, which is incredible. Did you see oh, he's competing yeah, this season? Yeah. yeah. And he's, he's already in very, very good shape. Oh, he's, man. yeah, of course. He's <laughs> fucking shredded to the bone. It's crazy. Uh, he is incredible. Yeah. So to know that he's going to be there at Worlds. Uh, and then just the WMBF, I know Gordon's filming it for us. You're there. Like the whole team's there. Jess is competing. We've already got like our Airbnb, the tan booked. It's just going to be such a fun experience that. Yeah. No matter the placing, I know I said I want a top three, but no matter the placing, I know it's going to be a very special day. And I think just knowing that you're all there is just going to give me that extra edge. Like, yeah. um, I'm going to have some big voices in the crowd giving me lots of kind of glutes and go on, Steve, you've got this. You're the winner. You take that pose, that sort of stuff. Um, and that's got to help. It's like the home, I'm on home turf. I feel like I'm a little yeah. bit, and I've got a bit of a, yeah, a little bit of a, what's it called? Something in my corner. So we just have to see what happens though and yeah. follow through, keep digging through from this Thursday recording this through to Sunday. Uh, I kind of want to see a new low on the scale in the 160s because that will kind of signify the whole digging, but I'm not obsessed about so it. So you are pushing now to this Sunday and then you're starting the peak week. Yeah, so it'll be another progressive linear low yeah. Um, yeah. Monday through Saturday because yeah. like I said... I'm not looking <laughs> particularly good. So I need to be careful to remove the fatigue and fill yeah. back up. And I don't think the trade-off of getting off, inching off a little bit more condition is worth being at all fatigued and losing mm -hmm. any fullness. Because I think one of my, actually, to compare me versus Charlie a little bit, I think I'm potentially a little bit more full and I might have marginally, well, I have more muscle mass than him. I'm heavier than him, but I'm also a bit taller than him. But I think he's very very sharp mm. but maybe because he i know he had to push for his show and i'm just thinking like um 
strategically against this one guy who yeah. I know I'm against. His calling card is going to be like shape, flow, presentation, condition. I know I probably match him on condition. Maybe I can come through and beat him with this week. I don't know. It depends what he's doing. But fullness to my physique and like pure muscularity wise, I think is a, a strong point still for me. So I want to maintain that against yeah. him, which might be enough, like, because it's a scoring point, I guess. Um, I think that's the way to go rather than like digging myself into the ground and then not really seeing through. So yeah, no, absolutely. pushing through till Sunday. That was my <laughs> long answer. Yeah. So when you guys listen to that, Steve pushed until yesterday and now he's already in the peak week. Yeah. So I'll taper back up carbs probably very similarly to before. I think I started at 450. Mm -hmm. I'll probably start closer to like 500 because I'll be more depleted and more disheveled, yeah. um, but maybe not push up. Uh, maybe I'll push even actually even higher on carbs. Who knows? We'll mm -hmm. just have to check feedback, look at the physique um, and see what happens. And yeah. yeah, taper back. Training will probably taper back midweek because okay. I'm still early in the mesocycle, so I can still push training pretty hard. And that might have some positive things as well. Yeah. Uh, but I have to be careful with legs because I re really fucked up my legs this week. They're still kind of <laughs> tender. Um, and I don't want any soreness or damage in, yeah. the, in the legs. Leading yeah, legs the is a different story in prep, right? Yeah. yeah. It's just, you have to go low volume. You can't do a lot on legs. No. <laughs> they can't do it. No. Uh, but, but it's crazy, the discrepancy between them, the volume, uh, what it can be. Um, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, like five sets of hack squats in my peak weeks would not be unheard of. Mm. I could do that legitimately, not RAR. No chance. <laughs> no chance. I can't even do three. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just gone at two sets. It's like yeah. that. They're done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. SLDLs are right now killing me in the sense of like mentally speaking, going in there. Uh, oh, this is such a tough lift. Such a tough lift. Um, but I'm also under the opinion that, well, I'm someone who is like, if you can go all the way to the floor, then you go all the way to the floor and you're not just going over to something else, like an RDL where you are just convincing yourself of cutting the range of motion. I, I know sure. that you've done it, Steve, um, and no offense to you, uh, but I have a hard time convincing myself then to cut the range of motion. Can you give your rationale behind it just very quickly? Is it yeah, due to I mean systemic fatigue? My range of motion actually isn't too different. Uh, oh, right. I almost touched the floor oh, uh, right. with the RDL. Right. Um, the main difference is starting from versus the floor versus the top. Mm. But I just, uh, I'd ran, basically, the reason I switched it was um, staleness. I'd ran mm. the SLDL for the entire time in lockdown because that's, yeah. I didn't, I don't know why I didn't want to run an RDL, but I just, I was doing it the whole, like for six months, basically. Yeah. So it was just getting to a point where I was like, uh, it's just not feeling that great. It's yeah. just like just enough of a, like if you change your stance, just enough difference changing, like coming from the rack and starting from the top versus the bottom was enough for me to feel like it just felt better. So yeah, makes sense. That, that was really the only reason. Um, that's the only reason I ever really changed like a hip hinge would be like just to run it into the ground. It's starting to feel a bit iffy. Let's just try something else. Like I did good mornings. Um, I can't remember the last time I did good mornings, but I was running those for a period of time as well. Yeah, makes sense. No, absolutely. I have nothing more to say hmm. other than that I'm very much looking forward to the WMBF. And that's basically it already. And that's this time next time, next time we'll be talking, we'll be very close. Very close. Next time we're talking... Um, it's close for us, but then the WMBF will already be over for yeah, the true. listeners. Yeah, true. The listeners. Yeah, so just as well, we touched on it uh, a lot this time around. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, if anyone's listening, you still have time to get a ticket. So support natural bodybuilding, support the WMBF. This is their first, like their, the WMBF UK's first show in the UK. Uh, it's in Birmingham at yeah. the Crescent Theatre, I believe is the and name. And Ren Steph and probably the entire team, um, but most of those two they have put in a lot of work and effort in making that happen and i'm very confident that this is going to be a freaking fantastic show especially uh, considering that it's the first time they are doing it i think that this will maybe set the standard for a new um new level or standard in hopefully natural bodybuilding in, in, in the uk and we're all going to be there so they can come and say hi and they can 
talk to Harry and Mike all day because they're not even competing. And uh, Pascal's going to be there as well. And so, and Jesse's going to be there. So we're all going to be there and you yeah. can come and say hi to us. So if anyone's yeah. listening and is there and wants to do me a favor, um, get me some snack at Jack's. I'm a big fan of snack at Jack's. <laughs> uh, I'm just not a big fan of their packaging. Awful. Why's that? Have you too, not? Like, too much just plastic? Rip. They just, you undo them and then yeah. like, it just rips everywhere. It's like, this is so inconvenient. That's true. Need that's to buy true. like a Tupperware that's like cylinder yeah. and you can just slot them all into. The best one, <laughs> I good. think, is um, vinegar, salted vinegar. Boy, you can't really have too oh, many strong. of those because your lips are starting to burn after a while. But because they are so intense, it's amazing. I, actually, and cheese and are great. Very tasty. The yeah. chocolate ones are great. Caramel ones. Yeah. Don't often have the cheese ones. I can't remember ever having the cheese Chocolate ones. Chocolate ones are though very, very calorically dense. Uh, 62 kcals per uh, per cake, whereas something it's like, like salt 10 and different. Huh? It's like 10 calories different. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, the right. cheese and the, the salt right of vinegar, they have 38 and 37. I can't believe you know it off the top of your head. <laughs> yeah, it's just because Katie ordered a bunch of those uh, at some point. And we <laughs> have so them funny. lying around here at home. And I was just like surprised of how much... Or, it's not the, much the if you really think about it. it but great. It, it is like as if you are eating... Or when you were eating like two of those cheese ones, you nearly only have like one for the chocolate ones. We have little chocolate chips on there. They're pretty nice. Mm, that's true. Anyway, guys. Um, that's why I peek on. Well, yeah. Snack jam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've already planned it in as well. But the th- the um, anyway, enough about that. We will end the show here, <laughs> guys. Thank you very much for listening, tuning in as always. Show your love, show your support. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe button, thumbs up, all that kind of stuff. Why we do a poor job, you know that, and that's why it's especially important. <laughs> that you guys do a better job than we do in just doing it all right so guys thank you very much for listening and i guess we speak to you very soon cheers So I'm Steve Hall, founder of Revive Stronger and a coach of Revive Stronger. My name is Pascal Flor. I'm the co-owner of Revive Stronger and also a coach, of course. Revive Stronger has probably been going solidly for three years, probably roughly about three years. Revive Stronger, to me, it is becoming kind of my child, my foster child. It's the gathering and getting together of like-minded people. We've been expanding the coaching team, which is helping us help more people. Uh, but each coach can only help a certain number of people. Right now, it's all over the place. We have YouTube, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, but there isn't that community aspect behind that. And so the next step for us is developing a membership site. So basically, we want to create a family and a community that is then benefiting from another. A really cool community for people within our little niche is going to be a website. They will get early access to our podcast. You can access us, ask us questions, the community aspect. We have a forum there. You can ask questions, but also you can you can lock your journey. There's also going to be courses on there, courses, presentations on different topics. Discount of past seminar footage. We will log our journey as well. We'll start vlogging. We're going to have documentaries, our entire athletic journey. Furthermore, they get access to an exercise video library. The exercises that we love for hypertrophy and maximizing hypertrophy, we're going to go through those in depth, telling you how to execute them. We cap them concise and also mobile friendly so that you can watch them in between your sets. I'm super excited to grow this community. The amount of value that we're going to be delivering is huge. And I'd love you to be part of it. You will get so much out of that. I'll see you inside.